Hello you sexy beast and welcome back to the War Thunder patch 1.67 death server. In this one we are going to take a look at the RU251, Germany's new tier 4 premium light tank. The RU251 currently costs 7480 golden eagles, at least that's the suggested price. This is quite steep, but honestly I think this thing might be worth it. Let's give you a little bit of context of what this tank actually is. The RU251 has a 90mm BK90 cannon, which is the same cannon as is found on the Jagdpanzer 45 at, uh, well, tier 5, belt rating 7.3. Now despite the gun being the same, you actually get a little bit of a different armor loadout. On the Conan Jagdpanzer, your stock shell is an APCR shell, then you have a heat FS shell between 20 minutes of penetration and your standard HE shell. On the RU251, however, your standard shell is a HESH shell, actually, which is really interesting. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this shell is quite weak. Being only a 90mm gun, this shell only has 105mm of penetration. Keep that in mind, this shell is not going to be advisable to use against most of the enemies you're going to face. However, it still retains the heat FS shell, with the same penetration and costing only 560 silver lines per shot at 6.7. Now another very interesting feature of this tank is the absolutely insane speed. This is the new fastest tank in War Thunder. At least in arcade mode, it's currently indicating me a top speed of 89 km per hour. Let's see if that changes when we go into tank realistic modes. It's 80 km per hour. Now of course this doesn't mean that the tank will actually reach those speeds, but even if it only goes to about 60 or 70 km per hour, this thing is extremely maneuverable. This thing might be more maneuverable than a leopard. Actually, it probably is going to be more maneuverable than a leopard. Having a very, very competitive gun for its tier, and overall just being quite sneaky, as you can see the tank is very low profile, it's actually quite uh, quite small, and just zooms around the map incredibly well. Now what else is there to note about the, uh, Ryu, the RU251? Besides the 90mm gun, you do get two uh, machine guns. You have a coaxial 7.62mm MG3, as well as a MG3 on the top of the tank, which means not really going to have any problems in marking targets for your team or even firing at aircraft, although this caliber will not be too effective against aircraft. Now in terms of armor, forget it. This tank is not designed with armor in mind, it's designed with speed and maneuverability in mind, as you can see by the weight of only 25 tons. That being said, the 30mm armor plate on the front does give you about 50mm of effective armor. However, once you go to the sides of the turret cheeks and stuff like that, you are going to suffer. The front of the gun metal is only 50mm thick. I suppose there might be a, um, a secondary plate, armor plate behind that, I'm not sure, I, can, I can't actually see this in the... Uh, armor model, but as you can see, armor is not a thing. You may be able to deflect uh, heavy machine gun fire, but even then, the Russian machine gun fire is probably going to go through the size of cheeks. Side armor, 20mm thick, just forget it. Rear armor, 8mm thick. This one can be penetrated by aircraft light machine guns. Now taking a look at the X-ray model, actually reveals that this tank has a, well, a pretty standard crew loadout. Three crew in the turret, one driver in the front is pretty much standard of most uh, post-war tanks. Uh, we have a big ass ammo rack in the front, so keep an eye out for that. Although, to be, yeah, to be fair, by the time you get shot at, you're probably going to die anyway, so this ammo rack isn't really going to be that much of a detriment. And you have a huge, huge engine in the back, which I guess you can use to uh, soak up shells if you have no other option. But keep in mind, 8 millimeters of armor. Machine gun fire will go through that and destroy your engine. So what about the reload? Well, the base reload is 9.75 seconds. Quite fast. On a fully upgraded crew, which will cost you about 590,000 silver lines and 1,400 golden eagles, you can put it down to 7.5 seconds. Very, very, very fast. So, let's take this thing into a game and let's see how it fares. Again, reminder, this is going to be the death server arcade mode. Most of the enemies we're going to face is bots. Don't actually take this for proper performance of what this thing is going to be like once the patch drops. Let's just give you an idea of how this thing plays. Alright lads, here we go! The RE251 in arcade mode. It does seem like we have some players in here and also getting massive frame stuttering due to all the bots flying around. Now, what I want to test with this tank is actually how this thing performs in, uh, well, if this thing actually reaches the top speed, how it performs off-road, how well it does in flanking around, and actually how well it actually reverses as well. Let's quickly test that while we're at it. Three gears in reverse, 
very fast, actually. You can effectively use this thing driving backwards. That is very, very nice. 50 kilometers per hour? Probably a little bit more. So, confirmed, you can you can use this thing backwards. Another thing that I want to test is, does this thing have hydro pneumatic suspension? And it seems like it doesn't. So, if any one of you had the hopes up for this thing having the same type of suspension as the Type 74, for example, it sadly does not. But to be honest, it will be even more... I... I, I, I don't want to say overpowered, of course this is the first time I'm driving this thing, but let's just say this thing has very, very enticing stats for being a 6.7. The gun is amazing, the mobility is amazing, everything is amazing about this tank. Alright, do you have some enemies who are watching us? Yep, they are watching us. Thankfully, oh, the reverse gear is very, very good in this thing. Alright, what the fuck is shooting at us? T26, die. I don't want you. Delete it. Now keep in mind, the CTFS shell only costs um, 500 silver lines per shot. It's not bad. Now the question is, is the Chieftain going to go up to us? We definitely have more than enough penetration to go up against the Chieftain. At least... Ah, never mind, he was on the side. Actually, that is something interesting to note. The Chieftain is, is 8.0 in arcade mode. And this thing is only 6.7. So either there's some trickery going on with the uh, battle ratings at the moment, or we just saw a wider than normal spread. Now keep in mind, it might be that that the um, our, that the dev server matchmaker is different, but that seemed rather weird. This thing should not be facing 8.0s. All right, round two in the RU251. Now it seems that there is again a chieftain. Mark 3 on the enemy team, but we're gonna also see IS-2s, which that's definitely a player, or at least I suppose that would be. So, it definitely seems like the um, matchmaker here is a little bit different from what it is in the live game. Now something I didn't quite check is the gun depression. Gun depression does seem to be nice on paper, but can you actually use that? I do kind of want to kill this chieftain on the other side. Not quite. I don't quite have the gun depression for that. Alright, let's get over. Hopefully he didn't notice this yet. But I just want to prove you what this gun is capable of. Keep in mind. This thing is... Look at that! This thing is 6.7, but it gets a battle rating 7.3 gun. Actually, a top T gun, essentially. This is just a smaller version of the... Uh... Oh, shit! Heschel, yeah, he did well, he did well, Heschels will absolutely wreck this thing. Now I looked at Zedgard in between the matches and it seems like this thing has a uh, between negative 9 and 20 degree travel on the gun. Which is definitely not bad, however there is a bit of an issue. This is facing forwards. As you can see this thing suffers from quite a bit of a hump on the backside. And, as expected, once you face the gun backwards, you are going to have trouble. Look at that. That's that's all you get. That is all of the depression you get. So, if you are forced to shoot backwards over the back of this tank, you are going to have massive issues in actually getting your gun on target. Okay, now let's see if we can actually flank around this thing. This thing is very, very fast. Now, I haven't actually reached the top speed yet, but keep in mind... We're going 60 still, which is very, oh, very, very fast. Now, can we actually beat the reloadless thing? Can we? No, we couldn't, but it doesn't matter because we get them anyways. Let's actually test out the hash shell, see how it works. Now, the Pencil 4H does have sight insurance, in which is going to hamper the effectiveness, but, oh, that is very nice. By the way, lads, from uh, Reddit, I've seen a post by Mike10D, our local data miner. It seems like high caliber AP shells and hash shells are being buffed this patch. Which actually means that the hash shell might not be quite as bad as I made it out to be on this tank. I still wouldn't recommend using it uh, as your main shell, given that the. Ah, we hit the tank trap. I still wouldn't recommend using the hash shell as your main shell. Given that heat, the heat FS shell is cheap enough and very effective at the zone here. Oh, you cheeky butter. That's what we get for it. Interestingly, actually, the, 
the cannon breach on the side. Got this guy. There we go. Oh, we're getting shot from the back. We're getting shot from the back. Not good, not good. These guys seem to be at least a very... Oh, that's an IS-6. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Um, I didn't even think the IS-6 would be in the game right now. I looked at Russian tech tree and I couldn't find it. But apparently someone has gotten himself the IS-6s again. Uh, already, actually. Question is, can we actually penetrate this guy? <laughs> he knows we're here, that's the only problem. He knows- oh, okay, he's reloading. Come on, can we get an IS-6? No penetration! We slightly, slightly damage his cannon breach, but nothing else. Now, the IS-6 does seem to have a 150mm frontal plate and a 50mm plate um, behind that, guarding the cannon breach. Which explains the white heat, the heat shell didn't really do much. Heat shells have problems with, with spaced armor, let's just say that. And that's the perfect example of spaced armor. I am slightly scared, however. I have never faced this tank before. Okay, that's good. We got a gun on the commander, let's see if we can advance here. Hopefully not get shots immediately. Oh man, this thing is menacing. This thing just looks menacing. Look at that! Look at that! Oh, yeah, he's turning around there. Where did that shot go? How did it not penetrate? What? Got the gunner again. He only should have the driver now. Oh, there's another IS-6. Not good. There we go. Guys, we just killed an IS-6. I don't even care. There were there are so many IS-6s! Why are there so many IS-6s? So before we head off to the final conclusions on the RU-251, I just will click one to do a top speed check in realistic mode. Now the acceleration isn't bad, but I would have expected a little bit more. But let's see if it, if this thing can actually reach its top speed of 80 km per hour on flat ground. It doesn't seem like it can actually. It does not seem like it can. We're hovering around 46 km per hour on this flat ground. Now one thing to keep in mind, this thing being very light, it does get affected by the ground quite, uh, quite a lot when aiming. As you can see, our aiming point is bouncing all around the place. But I cannot get this thing to 80 km per hour. So... What if we do it backwards? Nope. Not quite. Now it does have the same top speed to the front as it does to the back, it seems. We are reaching just about the same speed, really. So we can effectively use this thing, if you want to. Kind of in the Kanonya Panzer configuration. Having the back towards the enemy, having the engine uh, saving you. Uh, but of course you trade it off with having absolutely no gun depression. So, final thoughts on the RU-251. Is it going to be a good premium tank and is it going to be worth picking it up? Honestly, I'm going to say yes just for one simple reason. Germany at this tier, at battle rating 6.7, doesn't have a tank to compare to this. The closest thing we had to compare to this before was the Panther II, being a very fast tank. But, since the Panther II was moved up to 7.0, Germany at 6.7 has become kind of sluggish. You only have the King Tigers and very slow tanks in general, even the Panthers aren't all that fast. This thing is going to completely mix up German matchmaking now. Having this good balance between having a strong heavy tank line that can hold down the, the front, and having a group of these tanks flank around the sides and getting IS-6s and stuff like that from the sides, is going to be awesome. So I'm having high hopes for this tank in-game. Now, of course, not anyone will be able to make this thing work. This thing is probably going to be the best thing for you to learn how to play the Leopard at later tiers. And in fact, it plays very, very similar to the Leopard, having a very uh, fast-firing, high-penetration gun on a uh, short reload and a very fast chest with absolutely no armor. So, yeah, time will of course tell how this thing performs in battle, but I can see this thing becoming very powerful. Now, on the shells, again, I do not recommend uh, carrying the hash shell stock, simply because 105mm of penetration is not quite enough, especially if you face stuff like T-54s from the front, which you are probably going to do in this tank. Of course, you might be down to 5.7, where this hash shell will absolutely destroy everything, but for the most cases, I do recommend going with the heat of hash shell, since you do get a turreted tank with fast mobility, fast-firing gun, accurate gun, 
and high penetration with this 320mm heat FS shell. So, hopefully you have enjoyed this uh, fast preview of the RE251. Next up we are going to do the FV4005, the big ass 183mm cannon. I'm actually quite a Quite excited to do that one. And yeah, stay tuned for that. So lads, if you've enjoyed this video, do, do leave it a like rating. It really helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new around here and you want to see more content on patch 1.67 in War Thunder. And I'll see you in the next video. My name is Michael Boom, and thank you for watching. You can lift your head up to the sky. Take a deeper breath and give it time. You can walk the path among the lines with your shattered frame of mind. That you could always stay We can wait right here and play Until somehow you can find